Well, this sure is a strange feeling, and I'd like to try to capture it for my podcast episode number four, now here in Phnom Penh. You know, I don't know what I'm going to be able to do here because my mental state is way overly traveled. The details of other people's long travels aren't all that interesting usually, but this one, you know, had a significant flight delay in it that meant missing later down the line connections in places like Taipei, which meant going to Bangkok instead of going directly to Phnom Penh. So it, it's been a pretty uh, taxing and uh, uncertain stretch of time, but preposterously, uh, it worked out. I got here probably 10 hours later than I was scheduled to. The amazing thing to me, you know, I'll glass half empty, glass half full, the bags made it. That's what's amazing to me. Because we were, what, you know, six hours late taking off from San Francisco in the first place, I didn't have a shot at my connecting flight to Phnom Penh from Taipei, but my bags thought I was going to. That's how they were tagged. But the China Airways people in Taipei grabbed my bags, put new tags on them, rerouted me uh, through Bangkok and then through another airline, Thai Air, from Bangkok back to Phnom Penh, so that I got there at 6.30 at night instead of 10 o'clock in the morning. I thought I was going to have a whole day today, but I didn't. I did. I had a whole day. I just spent it ways that I thought I wasn't going to. But I met this, you know, really nice driver when I was here last time. He's a nice guy. Uh, I like him and I want to support him and help his entrepreneurial nature because he's put out his own money to get a car and uh, be a driver and and he speaks English very well, too, and he's smart, so I like him, and he was going to pick me up this morning, and then I was able to text him and say, no, uh, you know, actually Facebook message him, and so that was, it worked out, he wasn't inconvenienced, and, but he was there tonight to pick me up at the Phnom Penh airport, which just felt great, you know, having a, a friendly face. The The flight had been hard, I my stomach didn't feel that great, but I guess I shouldn't complain. I was able to stretch out, I was able to get a pretty decent amount of sleep. Good thing is that it kind of pushed going to sleep back, which pushed it closer to Phnom Penh time. So jet lag isn't one of my problems anyway, but right now I'm probably closer to being on Phnom Penh time because of what the wackiness of the delay did. So, you know, there it is. That's the flight story. I made it. I had Tola here to pick me up. But the story that I really wanted to tell, and for all I know, I'm going to edit this first part out, is that here I am back at YK Art House. A couple months ago, I stayed here for a month. This is an apartment. Maybe some of you listening to this have seen the uh, introductions and setups to the 360 videos that I recorded here in this apartment. So you have some idea what it looks like. It's nice. Um, it's not incredible, but it's a, it's a nice, uh, clean, spacious apartment with kitchen sitting area, bedroom, bathroom, and uh, I'm back to it. It's a place that's not mine. It's 6,000 miles away from where I live, but I inhabited it very deeply when I was here before, and when I walked back into the room, I knew what to do to set up. It, it felt like my place. There was a familiarity to it. The only thing I can really compare it to, my experience, is summer camp, where for 11 months of the year, I wasn't there, but the day that I would come back for the month that I went to summer camp, same summer camp every summer for 12 years, I, I felt like I was home again. And I knew every inch of the place and what I wanted to do first and second and third. Well, I, I, I hadn't really felt that feeling again. And I feel it now. And it's, it's really preposterous to feel it about a place in Phnom Penh. But I do. I'm all set up now. I set up very rapidly. There's a lot to setting up these days. I mean, it doesn't mean just putting in all the devices that need to get charged. It means getting the converters in so that you can charge them in the first place, in addition to unpacking all the suitcases and the other stuff. But I knew where I wanted to unpack them. So uh, it worked out pretty well. Anyway, that's the strange part. The strange part is that... I didn't feel so great on the trip getting here because I had it set up just perfectly and then pff, there it goes. But I, you know, held up pretty well. Uh, met one interesting uh, guy. Once again, I've found usually when other people tell stories of people they met traveling, I don't tend to find it that interesting. So I'll just say briefly that it's a couple older than I am who are doing sort of the same thing I am with Cambodia, coming back for 
fairly in-depth periods, but not relocating here, not becoming an expat. Uh, they do that in Burma, in Yangon. They also live in San Francisco. That's I spotted them in San Francisco and then saw them again in Taipei. They were interesting, and uh, they've been doing this. The difference is between them and me is they've been doing it for 40 years. They were doing it in Burma before the military took over. So these are people deeply invested uh, in a Southeast Asian country. It was, it was really nice meeting them. But other than that, it was... Uh, but not so great, but comfortable enough. I got through it. I'm here. And then home again. A friend picking me up and a room that I understood the nuances of and how I wanted to live in it and get myself set up for it, which I've done. So I think on that happy note, anything else that I do is pure conjecture. I think I'm going to wake up feeling pretty good tomorrow. And I have some scheduled meetings. I have some rescheduled meetings also. And uh, that's what I'll do. I'm here. I'm feeling pretty good. Looking forward to things. So uh, that is the end of podcast episode four. I was hoping I would be able to originate one. My first evening in, the some of the disruptions in getting here made me think that I wasn't going to be able to, but I did. So thanks for listening. I'll be telling you about how things really start to unfold, uh, starting probably with the next episode or so. Bye for now.